and disadvantages of their proposed org and model. Uh, PAS will not be an effective solution long term because it will lead to abuse of the system, placing vulnerable lives at risk and decreasing society's value of life. In places where PAS has been legalized, laws have transgressed, opening up the, opening up the country to legalization of euthanasia and malpractice as a result. We will look at the Netherlands as an example. When I reference euthanasia throughout my sources, I am referring to the Netherlands and not to the Oregon model. Uh, in the 1970s, or Dr. Jose Prayer from the Ottawa Hospital says, in the 1970s and 80s, euthanasia and PAS advocates in the Netherlands made the case that these acts would be limited to a small number of terminally ill patients experiencing intolerable suffering. By 2006, the Royal Dutch Medical Association had declared that being over the age of 70 and tired of living should be an acceptable reason for requesting PAS. The pressure of medical expense and accessibility of PAS encourages patients to seek it to lessen financial burden, allowing more people to utilize it. PAS is less expensive than extensive palliative treatment and might be more frequently used in medical resources when medical resources are scarce. It has been theorized that should such a scarcity arise, PAS may be used more frequently within members of vulnerable social groups, such as minorities, individuals with disabilities, and those of low socioeconomic status. In the Netherlands, 16 cases were sent to judicial authorities in the first four years after the law came into effect. Few were investigated and none were prosecuted. In one case, a counselor who provided advice to a non-terminally ill person on how to commit suicide was acquitted. Was acquitted. This therefore shows an increasing tolerance towards transgressions of the law. Society's value of life will decrease as a result because PAS is not a, an ethical medical practice. PAS itself is not even classified as medical care because it has no basis in medical science, has no guidelines and no standard of care, as well as no training in medical school. There is no support for PAS across the country. Over the course of 22 years, only six states have passed PAS legislation. In 2017 alone, PAS bills failed in 25 states, including states where PAS legislation has passed, like California, uh, court rulings have declared PAS unconstitutional. We cannot move to enact a policy that does not have support itself from society. For my first disadvantage of PAS, I will address how it's legalized. It can be sought out for interests other than patients' death of dignity, and the current safeguards in place, demonstrated by the Oregon model, are themselves inadequate. I will first address the ambiguity behind the term terminally ill. A study by the Department of Palliative Care and Rehabilitation Medicine says, we searched 10 dictionaries, 4 palliative care textbooks, and 13 organization websites. 9 included a reference to a limited life expectancy ranging from 24 months or less, 6 months or less, within a foreseeable future, or to just unfavorable prognosis. The U.S. Federal Code alone provided 4 different definitions of terminally ill. Laws such as Oregon's require a consultation from a second physician to confirm the diagnosis and prognosis. However, predicting how long a terminally ill patient will live or to what extent uh, cognitive capacity will be impaired by a disease is difficult. This leads to address the failure of the safeguard of the second opinion. Dr. Jose Pereira from the Ottawa Hospital also says, in Oregon, a physician member of a pro-assisted suicide lobby group provided the consultation in 58 of 61 consecutive patients of patients patients receiving PAS in Oregon. This raises concerns about the objectivity and the process of safety. The written consent safeguard in the Netherlands is widely abused where nearly 20% of patients are now being euthanized without giving explicit consent. In 2005, a total of 2,400 deaths by PAS were reported. More than 560 people uh, were administered lethal substances without having given explicit consent. For every five people that were euthanized, one was euthanized without giving explicit consent. The opponents also address the mental competency of patients as a requirement for PAS prescription. This safeguard has also failed in the Netherlands as laws transgressed over time. A study by the Department of Bioethics reviewed 66 cases from the Netherlands and 70% were women, 55% of which had personality or depressive disorders. 24% of the seen cases involved disagreement among consultants. For my last disadvantage, I'll address how requiring physicians to perform or be involved in physician-assisted suicide is an unreasonable moral burden, which many physicians are unwilling to do. PAS is opposed 
by most national accredited medical associations. The ACP does not support legalization of PIS. It is problematic given the nature of the patient-physician relationship and affects trust in the relationship and the profession. They state that society's goal should be to make dying less, not more medical. Control over the manner and timing of a person's death has not been and should not be a goal of medicine. Medical, medical professionals also foresee PAS leading down a slippery slope, discouraging them from involvement. Dr. Uh, J.D. Baudreau says, even if PAS could be justified at the level of an individual person who wants it, the harm it would do to the institution of medicine and law and to important societal values, not just in the present but in the future, when euthanasia might become the norm, cannot be justified. You're out of time, so we've got to cut you off. Sorry. <laughs>